all good things come to an end. Modern Warfare 2's first beta is ending or has ended yesterday by the time you're seeing this. And we already have some notes from the developers about how the first weekend went, what they heard back from us as players, and what they feel about what we've said. With that being said, I love transparency. I think it's great when the devs actually reach back out about things that we as a community are talking about and then give us insights about why they make the decisions or why they don't wanna make those decisions and how things are changing. So let's look at their notes from the community update beta weekend one. So on the main page here, this is from Infinity Ward's actual website. You can see the whole list of it too if you want to go through it and read it again when we're all said and done but it says hello modern warfare 2 players amazing to see many hopping this weekend one of our multiplayer beta on sony platforms so one of the things they say though what they're looking at into weekend two is fixing various crashes which if you watch the stream we've had a ton of those address a few gameplay exploits i don't know what that quite is but probably some of the issues where people are actually getting into the maps uh, patch some of the map geo and lighting issues. This is probably a second point to this one. Updated progression for some of the gunsmith related bugs. I don't know what that's going to be either, but we'll see. So first thing they wanted to talk about is the minimap dot rules. They're saying we don't like when people show up on the minimap because then it just punishes people for shooting. I can see that point and they say they want players to actually search out the origin of the gunshot versus just traveling directly where the dot is on the minimap. So this would be a good point to make for a lot of players. Do you enjoy needing a suppressor for any time you're firing on the map to not show up? Or do you like the having no worry of the dots? I can see both sides of it. On one side, if you're running a non-suppressed weapon uh, and you show up on the map, that is your trade-off for increased usual, like gun uh, gunfire control and things like that. Another thing to note, though, that means that in the current iteration in Warzone 2, most likely there will be no minimap dots when firing. This is actually one of my concerns from the original Modern Warfare on Warzone, which was you were required to run a suppressor to make Warzone really work. Otherwise, the entire team of every team of the entire map would just chase you down because you showed up as red. This is an actual very interesting statement, and I honestly think that this goes back to what I said the other day, which is I think that they've tuned all of Modern Warfare to be for Warzone and DMZ. And this seems to kind of lead into that as well, where you're no longer required to use a suppressor to stay off a minimap, and that is huge for a battle royale. But for a regular 6v6, it can go one way or the other. Okay, so second thing is target tracking. This is talking about the fact that the muzzle velocity or muzzle flash and all of the smoke was insane. And honestly, if you were running iron sights, they were a bit crazy. And along with the visual shake of the weapons, because they did increase the recoil and the visible recoil, when they added muzzle flash and smoke, if you were an old Apex Legends player, you actually remember this as well, how impossible it is to see past some of the muzzle flash. They're looking into that and they're investigating also players different, differentiating enemies from friendlies, which is useful for colorblind guys like me and for people who are new to the game who don't know which faction is which. I think that those are both super awesome. These are both accessibility issues for a lot of players. And as again, a colorblind, uh, kind of colorblind player, uh, these are actually really important. And they actually say that they will be trying a few changes in weekend too. So we're going to get to try that here soon. User interface, difficulty editing perk packages, managing loadouts and accessing the armory. It's primarily just UI UX stuff. And so, I mean, this can all be kind of patched work through and simplified. So that's cool. I'm glad that they're looking into that because it was a little complicated in some of the areas where you would go to equip something and it would be equipped base form instead of actually equipping it. And so if you had one of the versions already on it, it would remove all your attachments and you're forced to go through it again. Um, they're talking about the perk system right here. They're basically saying that they enjoy the way the perks work and that some players think it's an unnecessary departure from the original system. I can see both sides. People who love the way that the game worked before obviously want the old perk system again and people who are up for trying new things probably like the new one. I like the new one. I personally think it's cool to basically have specialists built in and not have to equip specialists to be able to do this, and everybody gets, kind of gets the option. And then it also feels like you're ramping up in power, um, so it kind of works as both of a, if you do well, you get rewarded, but also everybody gets access to these cool perks. Cool, I like that. Our goal remains improving the flow of perks ahead of launch. 
So they're going to look at going through and changing the earn rate and stuff like that. And so they could either, you know, it's said accelerating the earn rate, which means that you'll get to your last perks faster. Probably for most of the good players, you'll see it early game for most of the players that maybe aren't as aggressive or maybe aren't as good at the game yet. They can uh, they'll just get them kind of mid game rather than later game. Cool. Death Silence is another hot topic. Players have expressed they would like to see it as a perk instead of a field upgrade. We believe it's important in the game health that rushers are not able to move at high speeds without consequence. Dead Silence as a field upgrade creates a balance between freedom of movement and predictability of combat. So what they're telling you is tough shit. So basically, they're saying Dead Silence is staying as a field upgrade. And I can... So I know why players say they want Dead Silence as a perk. Dead Silence as a perk allows you to play as a flanker 24-7. As a player who is not a flanker or even somebody working as a team, Dead Silence can break up team com uh, like team comms, team work, and overall it, it can punish players for playing together by allowing players who aren't playing together to have an advantage over the other players. But it's done. There's a lot of things that really, and so I can see both sides of this. I personally do not like Dead Silence. I don't believe that at any point should someone be able to sprint down a hallway and make no sound. But that's just me enjoying some of the more realism to a arcade game. Whereas, you know, if you go full arcade, Dead Silence as a perk and just always being Featherfoot is fine. And then if you go way into the realism, then you can never get up behind players. And so I'm okay with it feel, being a filled upgrade. I, I don't want it, but I understand where it comes into an actual usable and skill expressive item cool footstep audio is being uh is, is being worked on it says in week one was very high giving players long distance directional information about enemies for weekend two we have some changes coming in reducing the range of footstep audio um for jog sprint and tactical and will also soften the cost of moving around the map so that means you won't you shouldn't be heard all the way around a wall and down a hallway and across the map and under whatever uh, if you're crouch walking, so this should just create some variability depending on how the player is playing. Perfectly good. Second change is enemy and friendly footsteps are now being distinct. I don't know what that means. Uh, I mean, obviously, I know it means that one's going to sound one way, one's going to sound the other. But I, I, I look forward to seeing how they do this without muddying up audio. Uh, because... It's one of those things that I feel like the more things they're trying to render audio wise, the more things get lost. Uh, at least it has been that way in the past on like Warzone and other multiplayer games that after a certain number of audio cues happening at any one given time, other ones start getting cut out. And so I'm wondering that if they start making multiple audios for different footsteps that I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it is. Should help players understand what's going on as they move around the battlefield. More details to follow. And then slides. This is the big one. Uh, this is the big polarizing one. Sentiments around the removal of slide canceling remains positive. I would say mostly. Mostly around high end. Um, there are obviously the people who have already figured it out. And it says, we are aware of the workaround and are contemplating on how to handle it for week two of the beta. Which means maybe they'll remove it. Maybe they won't. Additionally, we have some other slide changes for a launch that will make this movement feel a little bit more fluid and snappy. So what I would like to see is obviously not the return of slide canceling but the ability to cancel your slide. You know what I mean? So basically, I would I don't want them to allow slide canceling to be the primary mode of movement by allowing you to slide, increase, increase your momentum, come out, tack, sprint, and slide, and continue to basically glide across the map. But I would love to see them give you the ability to sprint, slide, and then cancel it whenever you need to, so that way it's a little bit easier to know where you're going to come out of the slide app. There's a few moments right now where if you attempted to slide, you would just kind of keep going and you could no longer kind of like catch yourself and get, get up behind the cover or catch yourself and slide under cover. Or a lot of times I ended up with, and it could be I was playing on an old PlayStation 4 controller from like 2014. So it's basically a grandpa at this point. Um, but it was moments where you were, you didn't, feel like you were in control of your own slide. And I think that something like that being addressed would be really nice and maybe have a penalty. So where you can't sprint coming immediately out of a slide or you can't attack sprint, but you can sprint or maybe you are kind of like slowed for just a sec, not, not a full second, but you know, like a, a like a small 
a very small increment to basically, you know, make you choose is the slide worth the time. Cool. I'm okay with that. And then it says we'll be implementing more changes and we'll be covering those uh, uh, on, on the way up to weekend two. And the crossway blade beta starts off on the 22nd, which is just a couple days away. By the time you're watching this, it'll be tomorrow. So uh, I'm excited to see how this goes. We're going to be playing some more of the beta on PC uh, this coming Thursday through Monday. Uh, and then our member games will probably still be on Warzone, as I know it's just easy to get into. If we can find a way to, to uh, work in some member games with Warzone 2, uh, or not Warzone 2, with multiplayer, the, yeah, Modern Warfare 2, I will uh, attempt to do so as well. Uh, but thank you all so much for checking out. Let me know how you feel about these changes. Do you feel like they're going the right way? Do you feel like they're going the wrong way? Or is there something that you think they missed and you would like to see them alter? I know I personally would like a little bit of an extension on the time to kill. But again, I haven't felt it on PC, so it might be completely fine. And it could be my old hardware. So again, let's hear what you have to say. That is always my favorite part of this because uh, I like to hear where the community is at on this. Thank you all so much for checking out the video. We are live seven days a week at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, playing games, doing things, living the life on YouTube here, live on this channel. And then we uh, may have videos every day and shorts every day. So don't forget to check those out as well. I appreciate y'all very much. Have yourself a wonderful day. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, peace.